Oh boy, Wellness Week Live. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, special guest, because his name is Anthony. I had to have him on. I don't know an Anthony I don't like, okay? So what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning into Wellness Week Live. Real quick, we're not giving any medical we are not giving any medical advice in any shape, form, fashion, or way. We're just two friends talking, so always check with your care professionals. Okay, so I wanted to have my friend Anthony on because you know, Anthony, um, a couple days ago, you had put an interesting post up on Facebook, and it hit me as like, oh wow, you know, you were talking about uh, family and how um, you know to deal with uh, divisive issues in family. And I said, wow, this would be a great topic for Wellness Week because, you know, on face value, someone might say, what does family have to do with someone's health? It has everything to do with someone's health. You know, if you have toxic relationships or your family is not in a homeostasis healthy way. It's debilitating. It can hurt you. It can hurt me. So family and health relationships have everything to do with health and wellness. So, Ant, thanks for coming on to Wellness Week Live. Oh, hey, are they after me or you? Okay. So now, uh, also, don't forget, hit that like and subscribe, people. Get those numbers up. All right. Now, Ant, question for you. So you put uh, on the Facebook post, uh, you know, talking about how to deal with issues and family division. So you're a family man. We all have families. How, do, how does Anthony deal with when you have a division or in your immediate family? Now, I'm not talking about your cousins, brothers, cousins, 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 but in your immediate family, there's beef. How, how do you handle it? <laughs> well, I mean, look, that, that's a really good question. And, you know, what's up, everybody? You know, obviously, um, it's a work in progress, right, uh, for me. And uh, it's a trigger. I think that for me, uh, maybe I care too much about uh, the idea of having a family together and uh, it's a trigger, you know? Um, so uh, how do I deal with it? Well, one, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I, I think that, you know, when you start to uh, identify certain triggers uh, that uh, you don't want to really cast the first stone, you know, I think that it's really easy for us uh, if we don't have that communication with family uh, to kind of stir up uh, a lot of that emotion. And then when we uh, go to reach out, uh, you know, we may have the right intentions, um, but the words uh, are kind of like daggers. And uh, there's too much truth to what we're trying to say because the emotion has taken over. Okay. Well, let me ask you something. So what if... You or whoever, anybody watching this, we all have families. What if you're talking to a family member and they just disagree with you? And they're like, yeah, and I, I don't see it that way. And now what? Well, first you have to understand that, you know, perception is reality. And, you know, I'm learning more about cognitive distortions, right? Certain things that you should all look up. And, you know, it, I have to respect if they don't feel as passionate about something that I might do. And uh, it's okay to disagree and uh, knows a full sentence. And so uh, just being mindful that certain people have these boundaries and we don't want to overstep our boundaries to kind of push certain beliefs or weigh our, our opinions on, you know, especially close family. Um, so that's very sensitive to respect someone's boundaries. And in fact, rather than kind of like pushing your beliefs, uh, try to get more insight on why they believe the way that and, and, and that I think would carry the conversation uh, a lot more. Yeah, have empathy. Right. So now I think that's all good. And I think things get complicated when and, and you, we, you and I kind of we touched on this maybe off camera, but talking about like finances, right? Like I can have a disagreement with a family member. Not a big deal. We don't agree on whatever, a religious belief or a social belief. But if somehow money is tied into this, ugh, like if God forbid you're in business together as a family or you're, you're, you got, you have to pay for a wedding together or something like then things get, I don't even know, like, you know, how, how one would like, you know, a funeral or whatever, like, you know, how does one pay for things? But I think you hit the nail on the head, though, having empathy to understand where they're coming from. I don't have to agree with you, but I can maybe understand where you're coming from. So uh, I wanted to ask you, what does it mean when you said stand in the gap? Like, what does that mean to you? So standing in the gap is building bridges, not walls. Uh, standing in the gap is the opposite of an innocent bystander approach, you know, um, hoping for the best, expecting someone else to kind of handle it, uh, or 
someday will it'll get better. You know, and I always say uh, seven days out of the week, someday is, you know, far and fetch. So um, I think the application of standing in the gap, it, it, it really, you know, I, I think of the youth, right? Uh, as adults, right? Uh, I'll be 36 years young. This you old man. Right. And, you know, maybe there's some generational chains, you know, some curses that haven't been broken within family, you know, with siblings and, you know, intermediate family. But with our children, sometimes they start to carry on these sibling rivalries. And I think that as parents, if we don't stand in the gap and talk about the importance of family and cut out these childish little rivalries that can uh, start from an adolescent and grow in, into larger and they never really have that fair relationship. And, you know, with the lack of uh, uh, co-parenting skills being hard enough, uh, with separation of parents in the household, um, it, it, it really... Uh, you see it in today's society with children um, that don't have that leadership. And it's really relied on in the school, um, yeah. where the school is primarily the main source of education. Right. Uh, so for me, I'm saying like, as a family member, uh, as a human being, you know, as a father, as a finance coach, as a, a coach, you know, I'm a var coaching varsity football now. It's my old hometown, by the way, that you're in. Yeah, old hometown in North Bergen. So standing in the gap is, you know, if you know better, do better, be better. And how do you do that is by vocalizing it, seeing certain things. If you see something, say something and having that proactive mindset. So stand in the gap for right. those that may not have a voice, you know, the elderly, the, you know, our seniors, the homeless you know, our inner city kids, uh, you know, those that live on low income, you know, these are conversations that it's really hard to have and are quite triggering, um, but stand in the gap. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, it's funny, and I, I, you probably would agree, like, also how we conduct ourselves as parents, as coaches, right? Like, if I'm, you know, it always makes me laugh when I hear people say, like, oh, well, I didn't teach my kid to, you know, be racist or I didn't teach my kid to look down on others. Well, you didn't explicitly say that you didn't say, you know, or, or I didn't, I didn't teach my kid to not respect their aunt or uncle or brother or sister or cousin. You didn't explicitly say that, but the, sh you know, throwing shade and making innuendos and, and kind of like, Oh, those people, or, you know, that side of the family. Now you didn't explicitly say, go hate them. But when you throw shade at people and, or, you know, or, or groups of people or, you know, how you conduct yourself, your kids are watching. And, and so, uh, all your, your your students are watching, your athletes are watching. So I think it's yeah incumbent upon us, right? You know, to, you're right to verbalize, to let people know, and also right how we carry ourselves, and and if we mess up, to try to better ourselves too, because we're all, we're all human and, and no one's perfect, only God. But um, l let me ask you, why is it important? This is okay. This is kind of obvious, but I don't know. A lot of I think a lot of people we all struggle with this, but sure. why is it important to? Um, to keep a family together for children. Well, Winston Churchill said it in a quote, when there is no enemy within the enemies outside cannot hurt you. Right. And so it takes a village and, you know, I have four children, one on the way, right. you know, uh, my spouse right now, she's in her third trimester. Ooh. By the way, is anybody an Anthony jr? Uh, you know, it might have an A in it. That's all oh, I can yeah, say sure. right now. We, you know, we won't, we won't do the gender reveal. Uh, you can't okay. catch me, Anthony. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you know, but you know, if when, when you see that, our, especially our children and in today's society with culture, um, with different communities coming about, right. Um, our children are exposed to certain things and they're making decisions that they're not at an age that they should be accepting social decisions. Right. They don't know and, what they want for lunch. Now they're going to make big decisions about their whole life. Like, you know. yeah, you know, and so I think that us as parents need to stand in the gap and protect our children from being attacked by music, by TikTok, social media, 
uh, super easy just to kind of give our children a tablet and tell them to go and get lost. Right. And they're going into the metaverse and Roblox world. And there's adults that are there that are, you know, predators. And On the internet alone, just the regular internet. Right. Standing in the gap, uh, protecting the enemies. The enemies are going to infiltrate. And I believe in in spiritual enemies and words carry weight. So I'm always, you know, telling my players and my children, you know, uh, encourage, don't discourage, right? right? Encourage one another. Uh, right. Words carry weight. You know, take the word can't out of your vocabulary. Right. Right. It's interesting. You know, you're coaching football. I coach tennis and I've played football and I've coached football too. I, and I think you're going to agree with this. I always tell parents, demand that your children play a sport. I don't care if it's pinochle, 100%. something you got it. Cause I always say school prepares you for a job. Sports prepares you for life. You learn how to work with people you don't like. You learn how to get up after a loss. You learn how to be perseverance. Like I think I speak for you too. Like the, playing sports my whole life really helped me in my life in the darkest moments, you know, Absolutely. right. You know, and school, you have to do good in school. And, and if you're not going to play sports, then have your kid maybe join uh, the band or dramatic arts. Cause that's also teamwork without, you know, getting your head <laughs> knocked around. But I mean, yeah, I can't say enough good things about joining a sport. And uh, so, and let me ask you this, the, um, so in your opinion, do we have to be close to all of our family? I mean, honestly, like, do you have, I mean, are you advocating that? Like everyone's got to be close or is it, you know, Hey, look, we don't get along with that side. We respect them. But you know, I mean, what, 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 how do you roll? Like, what, what, what is the? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to expect. You know, I, uh, I don't have a big family. And so, um, you know, I, I grew up thinking that Brady Bunch and family matters, you know, we're real families <laughs> yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, you see those different type of TV series where their families are together. And then you start to see how much division, especially in inner cities, uh, that there is. So, um, you know, I've always aspired to have a close-knit family where at least, you know, a reunion or, you know, I don't know. I, I never had that. So now, you know, I'm standing in the gap. I want to talk about family and porn. I want to get those corny T-shirts and do a family reunion. You know, yeah, I yeah. want to, yeah, yeah. you know, I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and it's so sad because in my opinion, and you can tell me what you think of this, I, I think um, and, you know, even Barack Obama started uh, an organization, I believe it's called Brothers Keeper. And he said, you know, our, our problem in America, if not the world, is the lack of fathers, you know, dads not being present, not being standing in the gap. And I'm not saying you have to be I'm not saying necessarily you know, I know a lot of great fathers and mothers, they're divorced and they're so involved in their kids' lives. So I don't want to make it like, well, divorce is a, a thing that can destroy a family. It can destroy a family, but I know a lot of families that are not divorced and their families are destroyed. And I know a lot of families that are divorced and they're stronger than ever because you have to still want to be in your kid's life. And I think that's the point when a, when a father particularly, because I hate to say it, right, but let's and like my own father is an orphan. And I know so many people who are, you know, the father's not in their home, their life. That's a game changer when you have a dad. Moms don't usually do that, but you know, unfortunately, the us male species. I mean, dads in someone's life. And I don't think it takes a lot. I think you just gotta be there. You don't have to be the the, the lovey dovey. Let me iron your clothes and bake your cookies, daddy. But I think there's an old saying: eighty percent of life success is just showing up. I mean, like, just be there uh, in your kid's life. And I think, um, to your point, I think it's like. Yeah, that's so important in a family to have a father. Uh, and that's awesome that you are building now your extended family with your kids and you're there and you're active. And, and that, that, that's such a game changer. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, it, it is. It is. And, you know, I, I kind of am that statistic, right? So openly to share, I was married seven, seven years, you know, separated in 2019. And, um, you know, if I'm being honest with myself, I feel that, you know, the kids at this age are gravitating towards their mom. So it's nothing that I can possibly do uh, to kind of be that superhero. Um, um, you know, granted, I um, kind of have more time with them during the week. It's not like that every other weekend. You know, I right. really fought for, you know, more time with them. Uh, but if I'm being honest, um, you know, when they're when, because I'm so hard on the fact of uh, pushing their per personal and professional development, you know, it's not the fun house here. 
Right. right. I grew up in an inner city in a low income household and it was I didn't have anything given to me. So with them, you know, I, I want to push them, find more hobbies, you know, right. trying to get them off of games and tablets and, you know, read or do uh, different brain games with them and, you know, uh, handwriting assignments. You know, it's not the fun house with me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, know, so I think that really um, pushing that boundary with them. Um, and, and trying to have that balance so that they can understand and have that same relationship as they get older. hundred percent. No, well, well said, you know, uh, so uh, your opinion, is there people now I'm going to extend this to friends too, but family and friends, I mean, I don't know about you, but is it, is it, um, is there ever a time where it's like, you know what, we're better off just going our own ways as friends or as a certain family member or a colleague? I mean, are you someone that uh, subscribes to that where it's like, hey, you know what? It's better we – because I'll tell you, there are people in my circle that I'm just like, yeah, uh, we need to be <laughs> – we need to have very much distance if because it's just too toxic if we try to become closer without getting into so much detail. But I would just say, yeah, like for me, I think sometimes you have to – I don't want to say burn a bridge, but part ways – politely with certain family uh maybe friends I and mean, what do you think about that hey, look and you know when you're trying to resolve that type of conflict you know you got to set your healthy boundaries and it's okay for the moment to take a time out and if you there's no opportunity to see eye to eye um then just be positive wish them well send them well wishes right um have no malicious or negative intentions right because what you put out into the world i feel like you get and right. you know having any kind of ill will towards someone you know because of a disagreement i i think that i don't want to put my my mind in that headspace um but for me you know i think that i suggest everybody to speak to a therapist right uh how to handle their anger management. Um, I think that there's a lot of undercover alcoholics that oh, don't even know that they're an alcoholic. Bro, when you got, I have people that I know that tell me, and these are successful people, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, every night I got to wind down with a drink. Every night? Every night? I, okay, uh, that sounds like you're a functioning alcoholic to me, but what the hell do I know? Uh, right, but, and they they, they mask it, right, with uh, with alcohol or with, you know, other things, maybe bad habits, you know? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You were saying. Yeah, no. So, uh, as I was taking a sip, right. Uh, shout out to fresh start advancement, you, baby. <laughs> was, you know, shameless plug. I think that it, it, I had to go on a journey myself, right. Uh, I, I had horrible coping methods, you know, and, uh, the amount of drinks that I was having on a, on a weekly basis or in one sitting, I, I didn't know that I was on the spectrum. And, uh, you know, when I would realize that I would have like a bad drinking moment once in a blue, but once is enough. And I think that we get lucky, right? You know, we, we went to a party, we had too many drinks. We don't know how or remember how we got home, but it was a blast, right? I think the more wrecked we get, the funner it is. And I'm like, why does it have to be like that? Why do we have to drink in the moment to enjoy it? Yeah. Um, so I'm in this December, I'm celebrating 24 months sober. Congrats. Um, and thank you. Uh, but to go back to your point, I think that it's okay when you respect your boundaries to kind of say, listen, I think it's best we go our separate ways because in this time period, we're both hot and it's probably better when we both cool down. It could take a couple of days, it could a couple of weeks, it could take a few years you know, if you feel that you really want that relationship and you, you know, you say, hey, uh, I hope all is well, you know, start off with some type of positive gesture. Uh, if it's reciprocated back, then have the intentions because you're trying to mend it. Right. I think that before I die, I would like to mend relationships just so that when I die, I feel like I have a clean conscience. And, and that's right. just something personally for me. Right. You know, it's funny. That makes me like, you're hundred percent right. And I, I'm always baffled when people uh, say like, you know, right. Uh, well, I'm not talking to this person or my, or my sister or my brother or my cousin. Okay. Uh, but when you die, what, like you, you believe you hope to see everyone in your family again, that it'll be peaceful. Why wait till you die? Why not make amends now? You don't have to be best friends, but why would you wait till, yeah, you die. And then what, what, what? you're going to, 
if you believe that you're going to see everyone in heaven again, let's just say, I mean, like, why, why can't you have a part of that heaven on earth? Like what, like just, again, not saying you have to be best friends, but uh, mending that fence. Right. Uh, you know, real quick, you talked about um, having a therapist. I, I preach that every friggin' day on this channel. And, you know, us guys, especially guys, women are a little bit better at this. But, man, we would rather literally die than go get help. Well, they didn't. Oh, we would rather die than talk to a therapist. Some guys would rather die than actually go see a doctor just to go get a health checkup. Uh, you know, I mean, it is amazing. And that, that is the reason why I think us men as a species die sooner than women because we're, we're too, we're too macho. We're too tough. We're too prideful. You know, Oh, I'm not going to see a, a shrink. I'm not crazy. It's not about being crazy. I always say winners see therapists. Winners have coaches. Winners have guidance. Winners, all the winners do. And, and, and when people say they don't have money for it, I always remind people, how many shoes do you have? How many, you know, like uh, you, you have the latest iPhone, you got money to drink, you got money for a therapist. It ain't that expensive. And I use betterhelp.com. Uh, Can't say enough good things about it. You can go on, on your phone and have a FaceTime therapy or talk therapy over the phone. Mm -hmm. Very affordable. There's, there's no excuses. They have 988. If you dial 988, if you're in a crisis mode, free help there too, folks. There's no shame. Winners have therapists. Winners talk to your priest, talk to your rabbi, talk to your imam, whatever. Uh, but I don't think it should be necessarily your your girlfriend, boyfriend, or spouse, although you should talk to them. But I think you do need a professional. Like, it's a difference, right? Like, um, so you, you talked about don't get uh, don't get too emotional. Watch out for triggers. What do you mean by that? Like, uh, watching out for tr triggers meaning what? Yeah, I mean, look, when... When we're trying to, when I say me, work on my positive headspace, you know, in this conversation with any kind of family conflict, I, I need to watch out. Um, sometimes I have rapid thoughts or racing thoughts. And sometimes if I see a picture or if I smell something or if I hear something, or sometimes if I'm daydreaming, uh, you know, sometimes I'll find myself where I'm just thinking about and then... I'll catch myself going into a thought that I don't really want to be in. And if I get too emotional because of that thought, or if I'm thinking about a certain situation that I'm unhappy with or uncomfortable with, I can allow that thought to consume me. And I, I learned I'm not responsible for my first thought, but I'm responsible for my second action. Right. And if I'm, you know, I'm starting to get short breath because I'm in this racing thought and I'm just daydreaming and just thinking about the scenarios. And then I get tight chested and now I have racing leg and shaking hands. And now I go into my text message and you know, like, you know what? I'm going to tell this person a piece of my mind. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I've done that many times yeah, and it doesn't have. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've learned the hard way. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just speaking from experience uh, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. Yeah. Um, so when you're going into these conversations, right, not to get too emotional, um, if you do decide to engage in conversation, you know, you got to think about this. What do you want to get out of the conversation? Yeah. And if you do find yourself that in, you're in these moments and you do getting consumed and you're emotional, it's probably because you care about it. Right. And it's okay if you care about it, right? So right. think about if you're going to call this person or you're going to try to resolve this conflict because it's eating you and you're, or you're going to say that you're going to send a text message because you're that, that's your preferred method of communication, right? Being uh, protected by not really hearing that initial response. So you rather send a text message. It's okay. But think about what you're going to say and try to be, and aim to su use supportive language, right? right? Yeah. Not to be too critical to lash out, even though you might be stirred up in the moment. It could be too soon. You didn't cool down long enough. Right. You might need another day or two or some time before you engage with, you know, the spouse or your, you know, family member. And right. if you're trying to resolve this conflict. Right. And uh, when you're watching out for these triggers, right, I, I gave you some uh, verbal and nonverbal, right? I gave you some body language that you can show that will show these triggers. You know, you have to be aware of it and understand that the both of you contributed to the situation somehow. So you have to have a positive attitude going into it. 
you know, Einstein said it best. You can't go into the problem with the same headspace that you went going into it. Right. You know, so that's kind of like uh, a, a three step process that I would suggest for those that uh, find themselves getting too emotional. Yeah, no, well said. And, and I always find, too, like when I've gone to group therapy or therapy with other people and stuff like try to remind myself like hey we're on the same team like i I like this person i love this person i'm not you know even i've gotten lost where i'm like oh yeah i forgot about that like i i'm on the same team i I don't you know we don't want to hurt this person that's why we're talking to them you know like it's not but yeah it's it's tough right emotions get in the way Uh, real quick you also said uh, five ways to have a fresh start so yeah talk a little bit about that the the the, the five you know pillars or five points that you use uh for a fresh start you know, so thank you for that. And and this is a strong way where uh, people um, can really get themselves out of the situations that they're in. If they're in a, a, a head space that they're feeling like they're in a funk or if you feel like you had a black cloud over your head or if you feel that just things aren't going your way, um, I would like for you to, um, you know, take these five points And of course, we can probably have a conversation on each of these points for a long time. uh, But just for purposes for today's session, right, I'll go through all of them and then we can kind of banter about which one you find is the favorite one. Cool. Cool. So morning affirmation, I think is very important to just the first thing you wake up is just starting to say thank you. Appreciate the bed. Appreciate your pillow. You appreciate your blanket. Appreciate if you have an air conditioner on a hot day. Appreciate if you have a cup of water because you woke up thirsty, right? Affirmations. Start to visualize and manifest, you know, like a successful day, right? Um, I just did a show on that yesterday, literally. Really? Dude, yeah, 24 hours ago, I just did a thing on on, uh, being a, what do you call it, on... um, uh, being grateful, which is essentially, I said, wake up in the morning, say you're grateful for five things. All right, go ahead. Number two. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad. Right. So, you know, affirmation, right. You have to really manifest and visualize, even if you can't visualize a win, visualize it, you know, uh, just be thankful that you woke up and your car tire has air, right? Like the silliest, yeah. smallest things, right. You can wake up and it's a flat, you can wake up and it doesn't start, right? Like, Oh, I left my lights on at night. Right. So you just got to be thankful every moment in your life. Just, you know, if you don't believe in like a God or Jesus Christ, not to take it there, right. If you don't have a higher power, right. I'm reaching out to those that if you do seek the spirit and you, you will find your purpose, but that's another conversation, right. But it leads me into a morning prayer. So I start off with affirmations. Then I'm st- and my second, you know, way on how to have a fresh start is a morning prayer. Right. And again, just it's kind of like a, a rites of passage. Right. right? Um, I say I'm going to be the first millionaire in my family, but I'm not going to be the last. Right. And I'll write that down three times in the beginning of the day, you know, maybe six times in the middle of the day and nine times at the end of the day. And I'm going to write it on paper. I'm going to write it on my phone. And, you know, this is a part of my prayer. Right. I'm just being, you know, again, I'm I'm taking it away from the religious point of view and perspective, but just getting someone into the habit of how to pray about certain things, you know, and, and, and hope for a better outcome. Right. The third is a mental or physical workout. Right. If you can uh, change your um, mind and change your body by just doing some type of physical activity, Uh, it it, studies show that if you uh, raise your heart rate and you break a small sweat, um, it sends these like endorphins through your body. And and I'm not a doctor Mm -hmm. or a scientist, uh, so I would highly recommend you, you know, look more into this. Uh, But it does. It just sets the tone of your day. Right. Doing a good stretch. Uh, finding a routine, right, for your arms or your backs or your legs where you can kind of just crack that space in your body to kind of give you a little bit less pressure, especially in your shoulders or your neck area. Uh, Go to a chiropractor first to, you know, find out if it's okay to do certain stretches so you don't hurt yourself if you have any ailments, right? The fourth one is a vision board, right? Um, going into a magazine, you know, if you still have a magazine, cutting out a beautiful home or a car or, uh, you know, 
uh, something uh, that would give you the mind space if you don't have that visualization of something. Right. You know, whether it be money, you want to manifest money. Yeah. You know, think of something in an abundance, right? Don't think of something in a small, right? right. Uh, think of a boat, think of a car, think of an island, think of, you know, different clothing. You know, it manifests how you would want to uh, uh, live around, you know, and, and, and improve your situation or your quality of life. Uh, by taking a couple pictures and putting it on a, a one uh, board, gluing it there, or in your phone, going to digital, uh, whatever, you know, yeah. a digital way, right? And and you create this vision board. Uh, and then the last one is an accountability partner, right? Having a friend or a family that you know maybe is a trainer, or maybe they're not a trainer, it's just someone who's a positive person, and they're in maybe a situation, and they're also trying to get out of the situation that they're in. You guys can hold each other accountable. Say, hey, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that's the best day that the both of us can go to the gym. Why don't we go to the gym? We'll start off with light cardio, do a workout. We'll just see where it goes, yep. you know, or on Fridays or, or Mondays, we'll talk about our goals. We'll talk on the phone for 15 minutes, talk about our goals, how we did last week, you know, we're accountability partners yep. you know speak with someone that um eats good if they're healthy and say hey you know i'm trying to lose a couple pounds or i'm trying to get more energy in the morning or i'm trying to be healthier you know uh, what do you recommend you know ask yeah. somebody hey can you help me with this and and asking for that to be there you know for them to be your accountability partner and i think that if you have affirmations a prayer you know, mental, physical activity, a workout, a creative vision board and an accountability partner. If you do those things and you apply that method every single day, you can go from having that black cloud or situation and have a fresh start. There's no question that will better everyone's life. Now, no one's saying <laughs> by doing all this, you're going to be a trillionaire, but it's, that's irrelevant. The thing is, is you're going to progress to get better and better. That's it. And, you know, my pastor always says that, too. He's like, you have to have an accountability partner and it can't be your husband or wife. You know, uh, but, you know, of course, you want to, you know, respect your husband or wife, or wife and girlfriend. But you need someone right that you can be an accountability partner to. And everything you just said, honestly, if people do all of that, I would make the argument you're probably not going to need to be on medications uh, for stress and anxiety if you're doing all this, uh, especially other things that, that people might be on meds for that you might not necessarily need to be on certain meds because this everything you just said is mental, physical, and spiritual. And, and I think a lot of people, and I'm not saying don't be on medications, always follow your doctor, you know, but I think as a society, we're quick to pop a pill when it's like, hey, hey, did you try to exercise? Like, I can tell you right now, my doctor wanted to put me on a statin for cholesterol. I'm like, hold on, dude. Let me let me try to exercise first, okay? I upped my exercise. I changed my diet. Sure enough, I didn't need the meds. Well, no thanks to the doctor because he, he didn't want to, you know, he didn't tell me that. He, he just was oh, take a pill, take a pill. You know, and again, work with your doctor. I'm not saying um, we're not healthcare professionals, but my point is, and at the five things you just cited, I mean, yeah, that will make you, I mean, that will help you, no doubt, re help reduce stress, anxiety, improve your health. I mean, really. Uh, so I, I, I agree with everything you just said. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, man. No, you're, you're, you're on it. So now is there anything else that you wanted to add before we close? I, I, I'll, I'll close with this, right? And this is a saying that I love and I live by and I understand it. And if, if we can, you know, shift the paradigm, right? Stephen Colby talks about win-win situations. So if we can go into it with a win-win situation. It says, Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And, you know, I just kind of close with that. And yeah. if yeah. we're going through a hard time, what are we going to do? Are we going to continue to go in, in, into this pattern? Or, are, you know, enough is enough. We're not going by the innocent bystander approach. We're going to seek help if we need to. Yeah. We're going to get an accountability partner and that's it. I'm tired of being sick and tired. It's time to be proactive yeah. instead of reactive. 100%. And you, you said it so eloquently. You you nailed it, man. And uh, no, I, I you know, I, I got to have you on the show more often. And, you know, I got my eye on you. I'm like, this guy could be a good recurring guest. 
book him. Okay. Pleasure. So, Pleasure. But, Pleasure. Yeah, no, thanks, dude. Uh, but uh, and I appreciate you sharing. And uh, again, congrats on uh, on your sobriety, and, and that's awesome. And that's a great. You're a great role model, and I wish you continued success, and you will continue to succeed. You, you got a lot of a great roadmap uh, that even you're inspiring me now. I'm like, all right. I, hey, I and uh, and and kudos back to you. I love what you're doing. You're really inspiring everybody. And through our vulnerability, or you know, our vulner that's a tough word. Vulnerability yeah, uh, is our superpower, right? Right. Uh, so thanks for giving me this platform to share. Uh, I'm, I'm learning and growing as I'm going through it, uh, but just taking it one day at a time. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ann, for coming on. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget, like, subscribe. And we got more content coming up uh, in the days to follow. I'm going to end this on five, four, three, two, one. Thanks, everybody. Bye.